Hey everyone, Caleb with ControlWorks here. I've been asked by a handful of integrators to make a video about our Crestron home driver to receive events from the Unify Protect Alarm Manager. And I figured what I could do is give you a brief overview of what our driver does, show you it working on my development system, and then we can go through how to set it up inside of the Alarm Manager, and then the Crestron home side, and to be well-rounded for those simple Windows programmers we can review the simple windows module. If you have any questions about the driver or if you're running into any issues with the driver, feel free to contact us. You can select the contact us link at the top of the website. Uh, you can reach us by phone. You can fill out the contact form. You can send us an email at support at controlworks.com. Or if it's during business hours and you want to chat, this is actually us on the other end of it. It'll say when we're not available, but uh, we do respond to the chat feature on our website. Okay, so what is the driver and simple windows module? The driver is essentially a listener. And once it's inside of your Crestron processor, it enables the processor to listen for events from the alarm manager. The alarm manager events can be things like doorbell events or security events, motion events, uh, fingerprint reads. There are numerous templated items and you can create them as you see fit. It all happens in real time. It all happens via the official API, if you call it an official API, but it is supported by Unify. The driver supports up to 100 configured events, and then it all happens local on the network. So we're not using a cloud service. It's all happening on your network. The driver also has a fully featured seven-day trial. So feel free to install it on Crestron Home or download it and put it in your simple Windows program. It will work fully featured for seven days. And then after seven days, you'll need to purchase a license for it to continue to operate. The license is here on our website. It uh, is $100 right now. We'll go over how to activate later on in the video. Okay, so here's an example of it working. I've got a G4 Doorbell Pro on the house, and I've got a Yale lock in Crestron Home. And when I read a fingerprint, I want to unlock the door. So how do we make this all work? First thing we're going to do is open up Crestron Home and install the driver. Select Pair Devices, and we need to put the driver into a room, and I've created a room called Unify. Select the uh, drivers and then scroll down to NVR. Select NVR. Select Unify. If you don't know where the help files are, they're on our website, but they're also accessible inside of Crestron Home. If you select the information button here, at the bottom there is a link for a help file. It explains everything that we're discussing in the video here just in PDF form. So let's add the driver to the room. Let's give it a name. I'm going to call it Unify. The next thing that happens is Crestron Home displays installation settings. The first item in the installation settings is the driver listener port. This is a port number that Unify will send us the events on. This must be a unique port number in your system. Things like 80 and 443 are in use and can't be used in the driver. So as long as it's unique, you can change this to whatever you would like it to be. We default to 8228. You don't have to use our default. Second item is the duplicate request timeout. This is a time to prevent Unify from sending us multiples of the same requests within a certain time window. By default, we use 30 seconds, but you can adjust this time if you want to change it down to like 15 seconds or 10 seconds. That's perfectly acceptable. The next item is show on homepage and show on room page. This is used for licensing and we'll review licensing later on. Press OK. The next thing that pops up are the installation settings for the license status. If it's in trial mode or perpetual, the English text for status, uh, the activation key, as well as the activation URL to buy a license. Select OK, and the driver gets added to the system. Next, we need to link an event to our unlock on the door. So if we select actions and events and scroll down to our room that we added the driver in, in this case, it's Unify, select the folder icon and the driver, and uh, let's pick an event, let's call it 12. Select event 12, remember event 12 because we're going to use it later. Next, we select a scene, and in the scenes, 
I have a room called locks and that's where my lock is at. And I want to unlock the front door. So I check the unlock front door. And now when event 12 is called from Unify, it will recall the scene unlock front door. At this point, everything is done inside of Crestron Home, at least for unlocking the door in this example. The next thing to do is to set up Unify Protect to send us the event on a fingerprint read. So let's open a browser and open up Unify Protect. If you haven't enrolled a fingerprint, now is the time to do that. To enroll a fingerprint, select Unify Devices and then select the G4 Doorbell Pro. And then under the settings of the device is fingerprints. This is where you would enroll fingerprints for any users that are inside of Unify. Next, we need to go to the Alarm Manager. Here we are presented with default events that are included inside of Unify Protect. The fingerprint is not a default event. We need to add that. So to add that, select Create an Alarm. We need to give our alarm a name. I'm going to call it Caleb Fingerprint because I only want my fingerprint to trigger the event. And so under Triggers, you can see there are Face IDs, LPRs. Fingerprints are underneath the Activity. So select Activity. Select fingerprint scan. Here we can select the fingerprint we want the event to fire on. So for our purposes, we only want me. Hit save. I only want it to work on the G4 Doorbell Pro. If you had multiple devices, multiple devices would show up here. And then in action, this is where we're going to send the event to Crestron. So change Slack post to custom webhook. And then we need to enter the delivery URL. The delivery URL is a combination of the Crestron processor's IP address, the port number you set up on the driver, and then the event number that we're going to trigger. In our case, we used event 12. Let's enter in a URL, http colon forward slash forward slash my processor's IP address, colon, the port number that we created, we used 8228 forward slash, and then the event number that we want to call. In this case, we want event 12. Next, press create. Now, when my fingerprint is read, Unify sends the webhook that we created. So it's going to tell Crestron Home that event 12 needs to be run. So whatever I programmed in event 12 is what Crestron Home executes. In this case, it unlocks the door. Okay, so let's give this a shot. I've got BlueStacks emulator running Crestron Home and I will go read my fingerprint. Next, let's talk about licensing. Where to purchase the license can be found a couple of different ways, but it, ultimately it's on our website. If you go to store.controlworks.com, select Crestron Home Drivers, and then locate Unify Protect Alarm Manager Module License, here is the license page. As I mentioned earlier in the video, the license cost is $100 per driver that's in the system. The driver comes with a fully featured seven day trial, so feel free to download it now and install it and run it. After seven days, you'll need to purchase a license to continue operation. In order to activate a license, you'll need the activation key, which I'll show you shortly. The site reference name is really just your reference when you're looking at your previous purchase history. So if it's the Jones residence, that's what you would put in there. The key is located in the driver settings. In Crestron Home Setup, when you're looking at the driver and you select the gear button and then select Installer Settings and you scroll to the bottom, there's the activation key here. You can copy it and paste it into the website, or if you click this link here, it will load the page for you and enter the key on the website. Enter a site reference name, enter a quantity of licenses you want to purchase. Most people, I don't expect to purchase more than one because the driver supports up to 100 events. Select order online for instant license activation. It'll put it in your cart. Follow the checkout process. Once the checkout is complete, the license is immediately active. To activate the license, navigate over to the users panel. And on the users panel, there should be a tile here for the unified driver. Selecting the tile displays some licensing information and also has a button for update license information. Pressing the button will tell the driver to check the ControlWorks activation server for a license. If there is a license, it pulls it down, stores it on the processor, so that way it doesn't have to constantly check in with the activation server. If you were in trial mode and the trial 
trial mode expired, all this will be grayed out. You won't be able to press the update license information button. The fastest way to make it work is to just simply restart Crestron Home. There is a console command, but if you're at the point where you need to get to the console to update the license information, then give us a call and we can take a look at things and see why it's not working. All right, Simple Windows fans, the moment you've been waiting for, let's talk about where to get the module and how to use it. So where do you get the module? Uh, it can be found underneath all modules and it can be found inside of security. There is the Unify Protect Alarm Manager module license and the Unify Protect Alarm Manager Simple Windows module. This is where you get the module. It's a free download. Select order online for instant download. We don't charge anything. You complete the quote unquote purchase and it shows up in your purchase history. From your purchase history, you can download all the versions of the driver. They'll be listed on your account page. Here's the module. It's a pretty standard module from us. It has the reboot finished at the top. The signal, don't put a one on it, latch it high after reboot. We like to use a delay, you know, use a one, have some time to delay it, send the reboot finished high. We have some digitals for refreshing the license from the file system and the server side. We do have an offline activation process. So if you ever need to activate offline, we have a process for that. We've got some signals for the license information. So if it's licensed, if it's trial mode, perpetual, the English status of the license, uh, activation key, as well as the activation URL. The activation URL has the page for the license as well as the license activation key baked into it. So you can just copy and paste that URL into a browser and it will load up with the key already in the appropriate fields. There's a digital for enabling the server. It's a latch signal high to enable, set it low to disable it. We've got a feedback output for if the server is enabled. Uh, there is a analog input for the server port number to override the parameter at the bottom. Some people like to drive their systems from a text file. So initialize this to whatever port number you desire and then enable the server. Next are the webhooks. So this is where things kind of differ from Crestron Home. In Crestron Home, all the event paths are slash event and then the number. In Simple Windows, you get to name the path. In this example program, we have a multiple serial sent. And for instance, on the first path, we're using slash something one. And then on the second path, we're using slash path two. The idea is, is that you can choose what you want to call the path. Back over to the driver, we have the output. So when Unify sends the path that you've set up, then the output will pulse when it's received. Last two items are the server port number and the duplicate request timeout. The server port is simply the port number that Unify is going to send us the request on. It just needs to be unique. You don't have to use 8228, that's just the default. You can use 9090, but as long as the port's unique to the drivers in the system, as well as not in use elsewhere in your system, port 443 and 80 are both in use on a Crestron processor. So can't be those, pick something not in use. The duplicate request timeout is simple simply a time frame which we don't do anything if we receive the same event in that time span. So you can change it from 30 seconds to 10 seconds, up to you. We picked 30 for a default. And that's about it. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. Our contact information is under the contact us link on the website. You can submit a contact form, you can call us, you can use the chat feature on the website, uh, or email us support at controlworks.com. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Thanks again for watching.